Hello and welcome back to question 6 Part 1 Partial fractions This is a 6 marks question So uh, partial fraction questions are usually quite straightforward In the sense that you have to be careful, meticulous with your working And you should be able to score all 6 marks But let's look at this question and see what are the things that we need to watch out for So first of all, if you look at this thing that we are supposed to do partial fractions to This uh, thing that looks like a fraction with algebraic terms inside Is what we call a rational function right? Just a function in terms of a ratio, right? Rational function. Okay, and you have a what that means is just you have a polynomial function in your numerator and a polynomial function in your denominator. Now, just like when you have uh, say concrete numbers, 12 over 9, that is an improper fraction. So let me just write that down. This is an improper fraction because the numerator is sort of larger than the denominator. Even if we were to write say 8 over 8, this is also considered improper because the number is actually the same. Likewise, in rational functions, we have a way to determine whether the function, rational function is proper or improper. And that goes by looking at the degree of the polynomial. Right? So you should be able to tell that the degree of the numerator in this question is 3 because the highest power of x is 3. So this is a degree 3 polynomial in the numerator and this is actually a degree 3 polynomial in the denominator if I were to fully expand it out. Right? So when the degrees are the same in the numerator and denominator, this tells me that this is an improper rational function. So what do we have to do first to make it proper? Right? To make it proper means that the numerator must have a lower degree than the denominator and to do that we need to do long division. Now to do long division, um, we have to first expand this out, right? In factorized form, it is very, very hard uh, or very, very tedious to do long division. You'll see why later on. So first of all, I've gone ahead, right? And expanded the denominator out, right? Instead of leaving it in the factorized form. Next, to do long division, right? We're going to take the numerator divided by the denominator. Numerator divided by the denominator. So again, this is also where some students might make mistake of copying wrongly. Make sure you just do a double check and see if you've copied down all the terms correctly, including the signs. Hmm? Okay, so the next thing is how do we do long division? Just like how we do say 570 divided by 3. You don't really focus on all five, all, sorry, all three digits over here. You just focus on the first one. Right? How should I resolve this 5 given this 3? So if you do the same thing over here, how do I get a 4x cube, right? How do I need to multiply to this to get a 4x cube? And the answer is just 2. When I multiply, whoops, when I multiply a 2 over here, then I'll get a 4x cube minus 6x squared plus 4x minus 6. And that's what I've written down over here in the next row. And we just subtract off, right? Just like we do in a normal long division, isn't it? So a 4x cube minus a 4x cubed is 0. That is great because that means I have managed to get rid of the degree 3 term. Right? Next, the next term is 9x squared minus a negative 6x squared. So this is also where students might make mistake. They might take 9 minus 6. It's actually 9 minus negative 6. So that's a 9 plus 6. That will give us a 15x squared. Now if you carry on with the rest, you should get this. Okay, and this is where I'm going to stop my long division. You might be thinking, hey, but I still got three terms to go. Why are you stopping here? And that is because the next question I need to ask myself is, what do I multiply to this to get a 15x squared? And the answer is, I can't, right? Unless I multiply by something with a 1 over x. If I do that, then I'm no longer dealing with polynomials and the whole thing can just go on infinitely, right? And then we don't want to do that. So, you know what? When the degree of this is lower than this, that is time to stop. Okay? That is time to stop. Okay? So how do we write down the results of this uh, as an equation or as an expression? So we can say that uh, this divided by this is equal to 2 plus a remainder. This is the remainder, isn't it? The remainder. Okay? Just like if I were to give you an example, like maybe not 570, but 8 divided by 3. I should be able to get 2 remainder 2. 
So how do I write that down? That is 2. And for the remainder 2, I have to write it as 2, the remainder, divided by 3, isn't it? And that's the same thing we're going to do over here. Right? I am going to take this 2 to be over here, plus my remainder divided by my divisor over here. Yeah, remember the 2 and 2 over 3 example? Yeah, this is like our 2 and 2 over 3. Okay, and the cool thing is now this is a proper rational function. Remember, when this, when the remainder has a degree that's lower than this, right, it's okay to stop. Right? Aha, you might think that, wow, so much work. <laughs> we haven't even started on the partial fractions part yet. Okay, here is where the real partial fractions come in. Next, I need to split this up. You've been thinking like, what do you mean by split this up? Let me give you a concrete example. If I have 5 over 12, this fraction over here, would you be able to split it into, say, something over 3 plus minus something over 4? You'd be thinking like, hmm, maybe you can, maybe cannot. Okay. But say if I tell you what is 2 over 3 minus 1 over 4, you should be able to do this fairly quickly. 8 over 12 minus 3 over 12 equals to 5 over 12. So you see, some things in mathematics are really easy to go in this direction, but the reverse direction is not as easy as you will know uh, if you're doing differentiation and integration, right? So partial fractions is no different. It's really, really difficult to split things up uh, or to you know decompose them into simpler substances. It's really quite difficult to do that. So over here, we're going to say that we learn in partial fractions. If we have, okay, so 2 is kind of proper and resolved. We want to uh, make this, we're going to split this up some more, right? Sorry, not that it's resolved, but it is not splittable. We want to split this up furthermore. So let's just consider this. Then I don't want to write the whole thing every time. Yeah? I just want to look at this part here, this one. So this one, since it's proper, under partial fractions, we say that, hey, it's possible to split into two separate fractions and both of them are proper. Both of them has to be proper. If this is proper, then my components here must be proper as well. All right? And it is really hard to figure out what's A or B, X plus C just by looking like that. Just like how it was very difficult for you to split up 5 over 12 into that. But the easy part is to combine them together. So why do I combine these two together? Multiply A by X squared plus 1. Multiply the bottom by X squared plus 1. Multiply this fraction by 2X minus 3 top and bottom. And what you have is this over here. Okay? And then the next step, of course, is to expand it out. If you expand it out, then you're going to get this. Okay. And then the next step is to group everything together. These are all the terms in x squared. These are all the terms in x. These are all the constant terms. Right. And then you know what to do next is to compare with our original uh, rational function over here. Okay. And I, I can say that, hey, this must be 15 because this is the coefficient of x squared. This must be negative 21, and this must be positive 1. And then that's where we have three equations, three unknowns. That's where we can solve using simultaneous equation. So I'm going to skip ahead right here. Right? You, can, you should be able to do simultaneous equations on your own. If not, actually your calculator can solve simultaneous equations too. So you should be able to get c equals to 0, a equals to 1, b equals to 7. And finally, to wrap it all up, let's write down the original first, you know, improper rational function we're given. That can be written as 2 plus 2 separate uh, broken down uh, proper rational functions. And that is the answer for question 6, part 1. Right, I'll see you in part 2 and part 3 in another video. Cheers.